Uh, this is the big piece of news for me this week. I know for others it may not have been too big of a deal, but um, Tesla has come out and, and kind of confirmed pricing and uh, delivery dates and it's a little bit of packaging information. Uh, and it's... Um, how do I put this? It's the Tesla is taking an interesting turn, I guess, on how they're going to market the car. And I can I can see the arguments as far as okay. Well, let me just first lay it out. They have priced the car. Uh, it starts at what is it like fifty fifty seven four? Yeah, fifty seven four. That's for the one hundred and sixty mile range. For the two hundred and thirty mile range, it is uh, sixty seven four. And for the 300 mile range, it is uh, 77 four. So you're basically paying ten thousand dollars per additional 70 miles of range that you want out of your battery pack. Uh, now there's no word on whether the 230 mile range comes with options that the 160 mile range doesn't. If they're going to go all Toyota on us like that, um, so that'll be interesting. But I think the the other the real interesting piece to me was that the car that they're going to launch with is the 300 mile version, the $77,000 one. That's the one that's going to come out in, uh, when 2012, are they still talking about? Well, they're, mm-hmm. yeah, they're saying games are expected to begin sometime around the summer of 2012. Yeah. So anytime within a six month period, <laughs> or yeah. since they're in California, I guess I could say it's nine months. Uh, or more arguably yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of make fun of that I mean I just didn't think like like I'm glad they're saying summer of 2012 and kind of reconfirming that but summer of 2012 isn't a delivery date it's a season <laughs> so uh, <laughs> like like June 12th that's a date you know we'll have cars on the road even if they just said June but summers yeah hey good for them well, they say yeah in summer happen. in which which hemisphere of the planet you know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we meant the Australian summer. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, I think it's... Uh, I, here's the thing. Like, this is a story, right? This is an automaker actually confirming what they've already said they were going to do, like, and announcing it, and that's like a news story. Doesn't that sort of... Isn't that sort of a commentary itself on the industry? Not to yeah, call it actually kind of is, isn't it? Say that one more time. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen closely now enough to you indeed. on a regular basis. <laughs> He's reading the chat, be honest. He's reading the chat. Look at the Bramble <laughs> Girls or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, isn't it a commentary itself that, like, a, an auto company just had basically confirmed what they've been saying? They're just going to do what they said they were going to do and when they said they were going to do it. And it's like a news story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, if. <laughs> It would be like Honda saying, yeah, we're going to release 2012 models in late 2011. Okay, great. Good for you. <laughs> we have decided to follow through on our promises. Yeah. And, and uh, which takes nothing away from Tesla and my excitement that this is a totally cool car. Um, you know, it nets down to the base nets down to about 50K, uh, maybe a little less depending on what state you're in. Um, you know, it's an awesome looking car. The performance wise, it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know that it, because of the price, it's, you know, going to change the landscape of things, but it's very cool to see it happen. Finally. Yeah. Well, Patrick in the chat just said the prices are higher. They had said 49.5 for the 160 mile model, but I think actually they had always said under 50 after the tax credit. Right. Isn't that the way that they've always said it? Uh, you know who we should have here to ask about this? I wish Evan was here. Evan Fusco, yeah. Yeah, and ask, him, put- ask him which one he wanted first, and then, yeah, he probably is way up to date on all this. Let's wake his ass up in Kuala Lumpur, or wherever he is right now. <laughs> Eating scorpions from a roadside I- vendor. <laughs> it's in Thailand today, isn't he? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think you might be right. But, I, yeah, I don't know whether that's... I, I, Either way, can we agree that it's fairly close to what they said they were going to do? I mean, this isn't uh, Fisker pulling the, oh, yeah, it's going to be, you know, $30,000 more than we originally told you. Sorry. <laughs> cough, cough. So what, we haven't really, nobody commented on what I thought was interesting with them coming out with a 300-mile version first. 
Um, but that's what they did with the Roadster. The more expensive version came out first. Th- yeah, but that's the more expensive version of a super expensive car. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, that's true. Maybe I mean, they're it, figuring that the difference the, the between people... fifty and and seventy is, I think, a vast difference than the difference between one hundred and twenty and one hundred and thirty-five or whatever. Could it be that they're they're thinking that uh, the people who are lusting over this car and just drooling can't wait to get one are going to buy the first thing that is available to them, and so of course they're going to start with the top end model. I mean, could it be that? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what my conclusion was, is that they know that all the early adopters are going to, A, they're going to go for the top end anyway, and B, they're going to go for, they're going to pay whatever for what is going to be available. Mm-hmm. That's my take. Well, in the chat, my friend Jerry says he talked to Chelsea about this, and he suggests that perhaps they're trying to nip range anxiety in the bud by bringing out the longest range model first. That's an interesting... Yeah way to take it on, I guess, yeah. Well, or maybe also they're thinking that, uh, you know, summer of 2012, the 160 miles of range, which is, I mean, let's face it, pretty damn impressive right now. Maybe that won't be as impressive by summer of 2012, you know? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I think Patrick's, yeah, I, I, I don't think this is really to do with, like, nipping range anxiety in the bud. I mean, this is a company that, whose business model thus far has been selling $120,000. <laughs> So for them, selling a seventy-seven thousand dollars sedan is, you know, kind of like dipping into the economy pool. Blue it, light special. Yeah, in a sense, um, it's a little odd to me. I, I, honestly, I, I think it is. I, I personally think it sends the wrong message. I think you debut with your base model, um, and I'm not really sure why, the why we wouldn't see all of these come out simultaneously. I'm not sure what the difference is in construction or why why there's a staggered release. What what the reason is for that? I, that's the part that I think is kind of interesting. Like, what's the point? I mean, I uh, this this is what could be interesting. Remember the uh, the Prius base model that was going to come out for the 2010 that was right. priced the, below the Honda Insight. The one that they made six of. Well, yeah. the hell, did they make any? Uh, <laughs> Maybe not. I wasn't that for, just. Was it just something they had in mind that they they thought fleets, you know, of like it'd be a fleet vehicle or something? <laughs> well, they announced it as a model that would be available in the future, and it's uh. a car that they never had to bring to market because uh, the Insight Two never posed any significant threat to them. Now it would be interesting if, in the time between when Tesla announces the three hundred mile, you know, releases the three hundred mile range, they put out maybe a two thirty. And then they decide, you know, the the fifty thousand, fifty seven thousand dollar market isn't worthwhile for us to go into. Yeah. I, I, well, and what competition is there? I mean, is Fisker actually going to be delivering cars? <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Right. And I mean, you know, not and not to go through things we're going to talk about possibly later, but and then there's Coda, you know, who may or may not have a somewhat similar. Well, kind of not even similar, not nearly as cool looking car. Oh, yeah, gosh. You know, I I mean, I guess, in other words, there's really no competition. So, you know, why not? I mean, look, if you're going to spend 60 grand, could you spend 80 grand potentially? Sure, I guess. You know, you may not want to, but you could. Or you could buy me a house. Yeah, I mean. (laughs) Whichever way you'd like to go. It's so far out of my financial league. I have a hard time just kind of wrapping my brain around, you know, an $80,000 car. Uh, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah, we'll see. I, th- I think it'll be interesting to see how the market goes by the time the end of 2012 rolls around, and uh, I, uh, you know what the market is at that point, because there's going to be a hell of a lot of EVs on the road, or not on the road, but at least in the market. Yeah, and there's a, a, a lot of them are pretty expensive. You know, and then they'll, there's, I mean, there's going to be like this middle gap. You know, there'll be the 50,000 plus, and then there'll be like the 30K and below, whether it's the Leaf or the Volt or the iMev or whatever, the Fiat 500, the Mini EV, whichever one of those decides to really actually ship. Of course, it would be cool if like the 160 mile range, they use the same battery that Toyota is going to use in the RAV4 EV. 
answer through economies of scale, they can, uh, you know, start to kind of whittle down on that price eventually when they when they ever do release the 160 mile range. Sure, I mean it makes sense. It, this is the time when they need to. Uh, Funky Moto in the in the chat. I mean, I think put it really well. They're rewriting the book on how we see cars, right down to how we buy them. Uh, he he or she, whoever Funky Moto is, said they know they're going to have to compete on price later, and that's a. I mean, I think that's kind of where I was headed. In that, you know, do you want a really cool, really fast, really sexy EV or not? There's not a lot of other choices out there. So, I mean, the leaf is cute, but it ain't sexy. The leaf is sexy. Come on. Okay, yeah. not really. Um, <laughs> there goes Nissan's support for the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, side Sidebar, guess what I get to drive Friday? Your wife crazy? Well, uh, I do another, that every day. Panamera? <laughs> not no. a Panamera? No. The Leaf. Oh. Going to oh, a, you suck. <laughs> going to a driving so event jealous. here in Charlotte. Oh, very nice. Hey, I guess you just came online. I saw that. Mr. F Evan Fusco just Evan jumped Fusco. on. Should we try calling him? <laughs> no. Hell yeah. Whole family's probably asleep or, or maybe yeah. it's morning <laughs> or something. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I thought, well, you know, speaking of uh, future Tesla owners. $8 a megabyte. My my my, uh, my mistake. Thank you, Mister Funky Moto. Yeah, wouldn't it be Funky Mota? If it... Oh, I very very good. No, you're right. <laughs> uh, okay. Anybody else have anything on the Tesla front? 